I am a deaf artist. My name is Shell De Stefano. My sign name resembles a snail. I was born in Melbourne in 1979. Grew up there before moving to Adelaide for 18 years. Then four years ago, moved back to Melbourne. I have studied a Masters of Contemporary Art at Melbourne University's Victorian College of the Arts. And participated in various exhibitions quite successfully. My art practice includes multidisciplinary art forms. My main forms of art include performance, poetry, sculpture, textiles, drawing. I also sometimes include painting. And often I use a combination of these forms in my work. A recent work of mine that involved multimedia started as a performance. I created a uniform including a dunce's hat, which I displayed on the wall and projected my pre-recorded performance onto the installation. This mixed media approach included a story in Auslan It spoke of the deaf community. Art is vitally important to me. I have found my voice through my artwork and through my practice. And my voice about many issues, autism, the oppression of deaf people, deaf community, our culture, and other vitally important issues that surround us and impact on me, such as the environment and time, and my relationship to time and space. These are all very important to me. I really enjoy the creative process of expressing myself through my artwork. I find this much more satisfying and important than other forms of expression. It's in my blood. Creativity allows you to get your voice out there. Last year was the first time that I really took in just how much autism has affected me. From growing up until now, it's always affected me, but masks have really exacerbated the problem. I spent a lot of time researching deaf identity and deaf culture and issues relating to the deaf community. But the coronavirus and the devastating bushfires that we experienced last year really highlighted the need for access for deaf people, the amount of barriers to access of information that we face. When there was the bushfires happening, we finally were able to get interpreters onto the screen and it's really raised the awareness of the broader community about our needs. My work in the art space has also allowed for further access to understanding for the wider community. 
I'm currently working on a project that commenced last year with a hearing colleague that studied with me at Melbourne University by the name of Claire Bridge. Claire had asked me to collaborate on a project about deaf voice and of course I said yes. So we invited deaf people to collaborate with us. The theme of the work is what I wish I told you. We asked deaf people to address this theme with their own stories about what they wished they'd told people. They shared their stories through Auslan, through poetry and performance. And they submitted these videos for us to include. And wow, the videos are amazing. And they're going to be a part of a larger exhibition, which is coming soon. There will be other projects involved in this as part of a greater work within the deaf community. There's a lot of collaboration with the people who've submitted work and Claire and myself are leading this project. It's incredible to see the different stories that have been submitted, including history and current events, and it allows deaf voice to be heard through our work. I really enjoy the process of creative exploration and the things you discover about yourself along the way. Also the hands-on work of sewing the textiles or creating the performance. But when you get to that final product, there's so much satisfaction to be found there. I find the creative the whole creative process to be challenging but also relaxing at the same time. It definitely makes my brain work as well. So I enjoy all of those aspects. And then sharing the work with other people and getting their reaction and watching them enjoy the work. Not just friends but colleagues as well and the wider community. Art, everything about it, I love it. Yes, in the past, when I was only focusing on painting, I was a very detailed artist. People would come and look at the work and then they would come back and on multiple viewings, pick out more details that they hadn't seen the first few times. So that was one way people would experience my work. Now though, with the work that I'm creating, I feel that people are much more impacted by it. In some sense, it's an overwhelming experience to view the art and the pieces that I create now. There's a lot of emotion in them. I think people come away with a greater understanding of deaf people and myself as an artist. And it's not just about myself, but other people who also experience this. They're absorbed by the work. In some ways, I'm giving people deaf agency. There's a mixture of culture and identity involved in my work that people may not be aware of. People, after experiencing the work, may be more confident in approaching a deaf person or understand that there is different culture within our community. My hope is that it will start a dialogue about this subject Similarly with what I wish I told you project, I'm hoping that will have the same effect.
Having the knowledge and confidence that my message is getting through is quite overwhelming and emotional. That I'm giving people an opportunity to expand their understanding is amazing. And the knowledge that I'm not doing it just for myself, but for other people as well, is really important. People are learning about the deaf community and therefore many people are benefiting from this work. And that makes me feel great. The knowledge that I'm helping other people to connect in this world. To me, the role of an artist is to preserve our history. Whilst also creating new work to be engaged with by current and future generations, and that's quite a lot to take on. My creative practice is very important to me. It's inspiring to understand that I'm giving experiences to other people. And that can be quite overwhelming and emotional, but it's so exciting to be a part of. Moving forward, I hope to be recognised as a deaf artist and to continue to get messages out through my work. I aim to have recognition from art galleries, public galleries who have quite a reach would be a wonderful thing. Also exposure overseas, to give the opportunity to a greater spread of the population to have access to my work. I also aim to continue to develop a large body of work. Multidisciplinary media is relatively new to me. I have my older work, which is still there, but this is my current aim. I want to create museum quality work. My mentor through my studies has encouraged me to work on this and to also continue to submit work for awards. So they're my aims within my practice, to continue to influence people and move them through my work. My most recent work of projection on textiles has led me to envision using a large sculpture as the basis of my next projection. Something that the audience can really engage with. Incorporating textiles and a written version of the performance will further play on how the light of the projection interacts with the sculpture. I also plan on continuing the series of pointed hats and sewn work. This will depict further stories of my experiences in primary school when I was young. In those days, we were not allowed to sign and were forced to communicate through speech and lip reading. The oppression of communication was quite bad at that time. And this is why I included Autism College on the uniform. And I've called the work Deaf Duncey. The dunce hat is brightly coloured to bring to life the experiences of my education.
They are celebratory colours that show that I was not defeated by what occurred there. Rather, I overcame them. My performance poetry then gives insight to the audience of the resilience of the deaf community. So those pieces are in the works. <laughs>